Good day to all of you fine ladies and gentlemen out there. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Derek, aka Darelink, of the channel that you're presently watching, and today I'm here to introduce a new series of tips and tricks for uh, becoming a better World of Warcraft player. Now, I do know what a lot of you are already thinking. Whoa there, Darelink, whoa. I'm already the best World of Warcraft player that's ever walked these vast lands, and you know what? That's actually okay. A lot of us are at different levels, and so not everything about these videos will be for everyone. However, if I do manage to teach you anything along the way, then I think I've done my job. Likewise, I'm very open to learning myself, so if you have any remarks about content or you think something is, uh, is misinformation, please do let me know. On top of that, I would like to stress that I'd like these videos to be community driven, and what I mean by that is if you have a question, or if you think perhaps that you have a topic that's worth covering itself that you're familiar with, please do leave that in the comments, and if I see enough trends, it's likely we will see a video on it. So, now with that all in mind, let's go ahead and fall on today's topic. It's one very near and dear to my heart, it's combat rogues. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is not anything about uh, gearing or anything like that, but we're going to take a look at our basic rotation, then we're going to try and understand the different subtleties of a lot of our different abilities, we're going to need to take a look at our cooldowns and how to best use them, and then wrapping that all together with a, a strong opener, and um, really, you know, getting into the nitty gritty of our full rotation there. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So here's our basic setup for the rest of this video. We'll bring up a damage meter as it's appropriate for comparisons, but for the moment, we're going to leave it uncluttered. As you can see, I've zoomed in on my buffs in the bottom left, as they'll be pretty relevant throughout the course of our talk. For our most basic rotation, for getting cooldowns and like for the moment, there's five main abilities we're going to be talking about. Sinister Strike, our bread and butter combo point generator, Revealing Strike, an ability that puts a debuff on our current target which benefits both our signature strike and the majority of our finishing moves, so we'll want to prioritize putting it up pretty much all the time. In a couple rare exceptions, that's not true. Slice and Dice, a finishing move that increases our attack speed by 40% and is by far the best finishing move to keep active at all times. Rupture uh, puts a bleed on our target, which we'll want to keep up when we can. And then Eviscerate, which is our last finishing move, which is pretty much the bread and butter. If everything else is up, you go ahead and use this. So I'm going to go ahead and attack this dummy using our basic rotation, but without any, using any cooldowns or openers. So first, we're going to want to ensure that Revealing Strike is up on our target. Second, we really want to get Slice and Dice up as quickly as possible, even if we're not yet at 5 combo points. From here, things get pretty simple. We'll be using Sinister Strike to get up to 5 combo points, and then once we're there, we either refresh Rupture, if it's not on our target, or we just throw it right into Eviscerate. Pretty simple. So I'm at 5 combo points, Eviscerate. I'm building up to 5 combo points. As you can see, my Slice and Dice is about to fade. I'm not at 5 combo points yet, but I'm going to refresh it anyways. My Revealing Strike is about to fade, so refresh it. Building combo points, building combo points. I'm up to 5, I don't have a Rupture on my target, I'm going to use Rupture. Easy. Building combo points, building combo points. We can see my Revealing Strike is about to fade, so I'm going to use it. And all of my other things are running, so I went ahead and used Eviscerate there. Slice and Dice is about to fade, refresh. And that's that! So, to continue on from here, let's take a look at a passive ability that's unique to combat rogues, Bandit's Guile, and how to make strong use of it in combination with our level 90 talent, Anticipation. When we take a look at Bandit's Guile, what it tells us is that eventually we'll be increasing our damage output by 30% for some period of time. What it doesn't actually tell us is how it works. What happens is, is for every combination of four Sinister Strikes or Revealing Strikes that we use, we'll gain a stacking 10% damage buff up to 30%, and it'll last 14 seconds. What Anticipation allows us to do, as we take a look at it here, is basically store up to 5 combo points onto our tur current target after we've already hit 5. So what does this mean? It means that we can use Anticipation to save up combo points until we reach a higher stack of Bandit Skyle. Then we can use our finishing move with that higher 10% damage increase without losing any of those prior points. So, just so you can follow along, down in my buffs bar, Bandit Skyle is going to be a green crest that goes yellow and finally red, and then it disappears and you'll see it pop back up at green again. So let's go ahead and take a look at that with what we were doing before. Alright, so once again, our combat rotation, we're going to Revealing Strike, we're going to instantly get Slice and Dice running, and now as you can see, 
I've got a green stack of Bandit Skyle running here, but even as I hit five combo points, I'm actually going to do one more Sinister Strike. I'll fall into yellow, and now I can rupture. Same thing. I'm about to hit five combo points, but I'm not quite at red stack, so I'm going to wait until I'm red stack. You can see I have one charge of anticipation, and now I'm going to eviscerate. Now, I don't have to wait. I'm at red stack, I want to use it. Oh, I had to refresh my slice and dice. I'm about to refresh my revealing strike. Unfortunately, my red stack is going to fall off before I hit five combo points again. But, now I have no bandit skyle, so even though I'm at five combo points, I'm going to start charging up. I've got some charges of anticipation running, and there's my green stack, use it. Now I instantly have four combo points again. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to hit yellow, and now we can start pulling. So I've got one spare combo point, two spare combo points, and I'm at red stack, so now I can use my finishers. Slice and dice is about to fall off, refresh it. Continue on as normal. Since we're at red stack, we'll try and see if we can squeeze this out before it fades. We did not, so now we're going to start pooling combo points. One stack of anticipation, two, ah, there's my green, I can go ahead and use my rupture, refresh, revealing strike, there's my yellow stack, now I can use my combo points. Let's keep pooling, oh, refresh my slice and dice, let's keep pooling, oh, we're not even pooling. Now we're in red, we don't have to worry, we can use combo points as soon as we hit 5. We're at 5, go ahead, refresh revealing strike, we're still at 5. Let's see if we can squeeze this out before our red stacks fade, great. About to hit 5 combo points, we're not at green stack yet, so we'll go ahead and use another revealing strike. There we go, now we can refresh our rupture. See how easy it is? Now that we have a much better understanding of our rotation, let's go ahead and talk about a few subtleties of our abilities. We're going to start off with Rupture. So the first thing you should know is that generally speaking, it's safe to clip the last tick of your Rupture. The reason for that is, rather than losing the tick, it gets added on to the next uh, Rupture refresh, even at five combo points. But the real question is, is how does Rupture interact with Bandit Skyle? So as it turns out, the entire scope of your Rupture's damage is calculated based on your current stack of Bandit Skyle, regardless of whether or not you lose stacks during its course. So as you can see, I've already got 5 combo points on the dummy here. I'm not using any poisons because I don't want to see any of their damage ticks, just to make it really obvious. We're going to ahead and use one Revealing Strike so that we have the debuff up on the, on the boss, and then we're going to hit Rupture, and we're just going to let it tick. So that was a crit, a crit again for 9,000. Uh, there's a normal hit for 4,500, 4,500, 4,500. So we know about what our rupture should be doing when we have no stacks of bandit sky up, right? Good. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building up bandit sky. So we're at green stack. And we're at yellow stack. And obviously I'm not doing any kind of rotation or anything like that. We're only worried about proving one simple point. So a couple more and we'll be into red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the rupture in the middle of red. And I'm going to allow it to fall off completely. So we're in red stack now. And I'm waiting still because I want red stack to fade a little more. We're going to use our revealing strike. And now that we're at about five seconds, I'm going to rupture. So let's go ahead and watch this. Watch the ticks. 6,800, 6,800. We no longer have Bandit's Guile, but it's still ticking for 6,800. There's a crit. 6,800, etc. And as you can see, that's what our ticks started at, and that's what they continue at even though we now have no more Bandit's Guile on. We do not have our damage buff up right now. So you're probably wondering, well, what does that mean for us? Remember when I just said, generally speaking, it's okay to go ahead and clip your last tick of rupture with a fresh application because it will renew it and add it on? It turns out we've actually just discovered an exception to that. Let's say you applied rupture during red stack. And your red stacks have faded now, and you're about to refresh your rupture again with no stacks at all. It turns out you don't want to clip that. And the reason for that is, what you'll be doing is you'll be losing a, a red tick and you'll be getting an extra 
uptick of no stacks. And we really don't want that. But on top of that, what it also means is that we want to refresh our rupture at any point during our red stack. Uh, we don't have to worry that, you know, our red stacks are just about to fall and say that we wanted to let rupture fall off completely, come point, point up back to green, and then refresh it. No, it's actually okay to put the rupture up one second before red stack falls. The next minor point we'll talk about here is energy pooling re revealing strike. Now this is pretty minor, but it does help, so we should definitely mention it. What does revealing strike do? Well, as we read it before, when we use it, it puts a debuff on the mob. This debuff is beneficial to us, and it lasts for about 18 seconds, or rather exactly 18 seconds, my apologies. So what we might be tempted to say simply here is that we want to have it up quote unquote all the time. But that's actually not quite true. If you actually read it, the only abilities that it assists is Sinister Strike, Eviscerate, and Rupture. So what this means is that if we're at low energy and Revealing Strike has just faded, we actually don't have to refresh Revealing Strike immediately because we'll be back at zero energy again and we can't actually do anything with that timer of Revealing Strike. So instead, while we're fighting, if Revealing Strike has just faded and we're at low energy, what we actually want to do is pull back up to about 80 energy or so. We want to make sure that we don't cap on accident with, say, an offhand proc. And then we can re put Revealing Strike back up, and we'll get, you know, about two Sinister Strikes right off the bat. And that means that we'll get more Sinister Strikes, more Eviscerates, and more Ruptures per Revealing Strike. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean. So I'm going to get rid of my combo points, get rid of my Slice and Dice. We don't care about anything about that. We're going to put up Revealing Strike, and you can see now it's ticking down on our Raider's Training Dummy. So we're fighting, it's about halfway done, we're fighting, I'm still keeping my energy low, still keeping my energy low, and I'm going to get these last two in, and now I'm going to wait. So my Revealing Strike has fallen off, and I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, now I can refresh it, and now I can get two Sinister Strikes right off the bat. That's all I mean. So there's a couple other periods of time where, again, Revealing Strike is faded, but we really don't have to worry about refreshing it immediately. And they're edge cases, but again, everything should be brought up. So for example, let's say Revealing Strike is about to fade, and Slice and Dice is about to fade. Well, we actually just want to refresh Slice and Dice, and go ahead and let Revealing Strike fall, Energy Pool back up, Revealing Strike, and then continue to Sinister Strike. Uh, another example is, let's say, Killing Spree is about to be off cooldown in your next GCD you don't have to use Revealing Strike and then Killing Spree because it's not going to help your Killing Spree. Same thing if you're about to vanish and ambush. If your Revealing Strike is about to fade, you can safely let it fall, vanish, ambush, then Revealing Strike, and then go ahead and start Sinister Striking again. Easy. So the next ability that we'll talk about a couple quick quirks of is going to go ahead and be Slice and Dice. As you might have noticed before, when I said that Revealing Strike only affected Sinister Strike, Rupture, and Eviscerate. It actually reads that Revealing Strike affects finishing moves, your offensive finishing moves, by 35%. For whatever reason, an offensive finishing move is not Slice and Dice. So as you'll see, I'll go ahead and get five combo points here, just so I can prove this to you. I have five combo points. I will use a Slice and Dice. Notice that it starts at 36 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and click that off. I'm going to build up five combo points again. Going to use Revealing Strike. So the Revealing Strike is on this mob, but when I cinch, or I'm sorry, when I slice and dice, it starts at 36 seconds again. So there's proof for that. Another quirk is that slice and dice does not trigger uh, charges of anticipation. So. Let me go ahead and build up five combo points here. And now I'll start building stacks of anticipation. So there's one, two, three, ah, and there's our five. And you'll notice when I slice and dice, I still have all five charges of anticipation. So sometimes you have to be careful when you're refreshing slice and dice and combo point point to make sure that you do actually have the ability to use those combo points. The cases that might actually come up where it could be tight is if you have Blade Flurry up and you're just not able to regenerate the combo points fast enough. So let's go ahead and try that again. We're attacking two targets. 
And let's just say, theoretically, we started storing up combo points. Again, this isn't a real rotation by any means. But, luckily, my slice of dice is about to fall off. So, I'm going to go ahead and re-trigger them. And now you'll notice... I'm almost to five, and I just had two seconds left there on my anticipation charges before they would have otherwise fallen off. So you do have to be careful. So now we're making some real prog progress. We've got a pretty good handle on our basic rotation, how we can supplement it with bandit guile and anticipation, and we know a few different quirks of some of our abilities, so let's go ahead and finally dive into some of our cooldowns. First, we're going to take a look at Killing Spree. You step through the shadows to a target within 10 yards, and every 0.5 seconds we make 7 assaults. I'm sorry, we uh, assault with both weapons until 7 assaults are made, and during this time we increase all damage by 50%. Now, one thing about this that's actually pretty important is if Slice and Dice is about to fall off, we do want to refresh it here, because even while we're in the midst of Killing Spree, we are continuing to auto-attack, and so we really want to have that increased 50% damage along with Slice and Dice up to ensure that we're really maximizing our DPS. I'm going to go ahead and prove this to you just by using a Killing Spree and then taking a look at our damage. So you notice I don't have poisons on, just so there's no confusing factors, and we'll Killing Spree. Going to hit Escape, and we'll go ahead and take a look at our damage done. And as you can see, our main abilities were Killing Spree, Killing Spree Offhand, and Melee, showing that we were continuing to make melee swings during the midst of that. The next thing that we're going to want to mention on Killing Spree is the fact that while you will be regenerating energy while it's running, you won't be able to use other moves or abilities. So what this means for us is that we really want to be as close to zero energy as possible before we use it. So just to give you a quick show, I'll start up a basic rotation. I'll get up my slice and dice like I mentioned, and then as soon as I'm at zero energy, let's just use it. And now if you watch, I can't do anything, but when I come out, I'm at about 80 energy. So if I had been any higher than 20, I would have energy capped, and that energy would have been wasted forever. So the next two cooldowns we're going to talk about are Adrenaline Rush and Shadow Blades, and why we always want to use them together. So Adrenaline Rush, energy regeneration, and gives us a melee attack speed increase. Shadow Blades, on the other hand, makes all of our auto attacks pure shadow damage, which means that they're ignoring armor for that period of time, and on top of that, for every combo point generating ability that we use, such as Sinister Strike or Revealing Strike, we gain an additional one. So the reason those need to come together is pretty clear. Our auto attacks are dealing more damage, so why not get a 20% haste increase from Adrenaline Rush so that we get more uh, armor piercing attacks? and while we're generating additional combo points, why don't we go ahead and have more energy regen regeneration during that time so that we can use more abilities for even more combo points. On top of that, these two abilities are both on a three minute cooldown and they both make use of Restless Blades, which is reducing the cooldown of both abilities anytime we use a finishing move such as Evis Eviscerator Rupture. So I'm going to show you a quick macro here that allows you to do that. It's pretty simple. You can show the tooltip for either Adrenaline Rush or Shadow Blades. Then you cast Shadow Blades and you cast Adrenaline Rush, and since neither are on the global cooldown, you'll use both of them at the same time. And I can just prove that to you. So you can see I've got both up right now. No big deal. Unfortunately, Shadow Blades doesn't last quite as long, but it's the best that we can do. And because we want their Restless Blades procs to be synced up, we don't want to try and do anything else fancy other than start them at exactly the same time, otherwise they will be desynced from one another. So there's a couple last things I want to talk about about cooldowns. First is Vanish, and the reason this is a DPS cooldown is because it allows us to get an additional ambush during the course of the fight, and yes, ambush does deal more damage than rupture. So on top of that, you might be tempted to use Vanish Ambush immediately when it's on cooldown, but because it's two minutes, and on top of that, it's not affected by Restless Blades, there's really very little chance that by using it immediately on cooldown that you'll actually get an additional Vanish Ambush during the course of a fight. Because of that, what we'd really like to do is wait for every single one until we're at a red stack of Bandit Skyle when we're dealing 30% additional damage, then we can Vanish and Ambush. Not only are we maximizing the damage done by the Ambush, 
but we're also getting additional combo points during our red stack, which means we get to use more finishers during red stack. And that's pretty happy time all around. So the last thing that we we'll want to mention about cooldowns is for those that are affected by restless blades, we really want to ensure that they are on cooldown before we use any finishers that would, well, decrease their cooldown. Uh, so the biggest time this ever comes into play is during openings. So we'll put up a revealing strike, we'll get our slice and dice going, and you know, not only am I going to pull up points here to get to yellow stack, What's going to happen is, I'll get to yellow, I'll use Killing Spree, but I'll also immediately want to use my Shadow Blades Adrenaline Rush. And you'll see, then I finally started using my finishing moves, and now the both of them are actually pretty well along in their cooldowns already. So by the time this is over, what you'll see is... Wow, because we did that, Killing Spree is almost off cooldown, it's almost three-fourths of the way through, and our Shadow Blades Adrenaline Rush is already halfway off its cooldown. This will come up during the course of the fight as well, where you're about to have something off of cooldown and you're about to use a finisher. Well, what really you should do is cool your energy for those couple seconds if you're not going to energy cap, or if you are going to energy cap, use some abilities and get some anticipation charges. Once the cooldown is off cooldown, use it and then use your finisher because you'll be procking those restless blades and you'll really get, you'll find yourself starting to get more and more Killing Spree is the Drone Rushes, Shadow Blades, all that good stuff during the course of the fight. So the last thing now is we're going to talk about our opener, our strategy during our opener, and then we're going to pull it all together and I'll run you a quick demonstration of what we're doing. So I'm going to get rid of my combo points here. As you can see I've gone ahead and zoomed in on the boss's debuffs and my energy bar just to call them out a little more clearly in the last demonstration. So for our opener, we want to use Ambush. It just does more damage than Rupture. Uh, and then our strategy is going to be to get up Revealing Strike and Slice and Dice ASAP and then we're going to start pooling combo points as often as possible as we can without wasting them but not using our finishing moves yet because we really want to use both of our cooldowns before then and the reason for that again is Restless Blade. It's very important that even if we're stacking up all of our Bandit Skyle stacks to say yellow before we use any cooldowns that we really really still want to make use of those combo points in reducing the cooldowns of the cooldowns. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and just give it a try and you can see what I mean. So we're going to clear out recount because that's got all of our stuff from our previous tinkering around. We're going to pretend that the tank is pulling, so we're going to tricks of the trade. He's counting down. Three, two, one, go. So we've got up our revealing strike, our slicing dice is up. We're at green stacks, we're still in no rush because we're nowhere close to five combo points so we're going to end up at yellow stack before we even care. We need to pull one combo point over. Now we can killing spree and immediately pop the rest and finally start getting our abilities rolling. So the one thing that's going to come into play here is I'm waiting to get rid of my cooldowns before I use my vanish ambush because the ambush will be free. So it's a little difficult to get rid of, but I did want to sneak in uh, the Vanish Ambush before my red stacks faded, and it was actually the reason that I was able to get in one more Eviscerate there as well in my red stack, because of those two combo points. I'm now in green stacks, my combo point point's a little high, so I had to go ahead and get rid of that. We're not going to Eviscerate yet, because we want to get into yellow, great. Now we're pooling energy a little, just a, for a second there, on our... Um, on our revealing strike, we have to refresh our slice and dice, and we are now low on energy, so let's go ahead and get our killing spree in on our red stack. Uh, we want to energy pool on this. Oh, but I didn't want to energy pool too long on that revealing strike because our red stack was about to fade, so I refreshed my rupture before then, got myself down to zero energy. We're not at five combo points yet. We're at five combo points, but we don't have any anticipation, so we can go ahead and start pooling up to yellow stack before we do anything else. Our revealing strike's about to fade. Energy pool, energy pool, great. There's our yellow stack. Now that we're at yellow stack, it's good enough. Let's go ahead and pop our cooldowns. Refresh our slice and dice, because it was about to fall. The majority of this rotation here, or I'm sorry, these cooldowns here will be in red stack, great. Red stack is about to fade, we're probably not going to sneak out another finishing move, we did not. So let's go ahead and start pulling combo points. We only have one combo point stored, 
finally about to hit green stack, so we can safely eviscerate. We're going to killing spree first, and then refresh our uh, revealing strike there. Alright, we're doing good. We don't have rupture up, so that's the next thing that we want to put up. We're at 5 combo points, but we can pull into red stack before refreshing our rupture. Our revealing strike is about to fade, so let's go ahead and pull. Done. We don't have to worry about combo point pool for the moment because we're in red stack, so we just want to get stuff out as soon as it came in. And we were at red stack, so I vanished ambush there because it came off of cooldown. So that lined up very nicely. Uh, our slice and dice is going to be the next relevant thing that fades. Great. Energy pool for revealing strike for just a moment. Combo point pool. Oh no, I'm not even pooling. I'm going to get up to yellow. Let's go ahead and continue pooling. I'd really like to refresh my rupture in red. I have three stacks of anticipation, so I'm actually not going to make it, so I had to go ahead and use my combo points early there. Everything's off cooldown, so we'll go ahead and use our Shuttle Blades Adrenaline Rush. Now, it's unfortunate because I actually didn't notice here that my healing spree came off cooldown, but, you know, we don't always play perfect. Mistakes happen, just recover as you can. We're not at 5 combo points, and we only have 1 stack of anticipation, so we can go ahead and start pooling. Now that we're in yellow stack, we'll go ahead and use our Rupture. Great. Revealing Strike is about to fade. And now, I'm going, ahead and I'm going to stop. Great. So let's go ahead and talk about one last topic. It's going to be... Our amazing ability, Blade Flurry. We get reduced energy regeneration by 20%, but we're mirroring all strikes to yet another target. So, there's a couple things actually here uh, that aren't very clarified that do not transfer over Blade Flurry. So as you can see, I'm hitting both targets here. But on my main target, I've got both of my poisons procced and my Master Poisoner debuff for having one of them struck. If I look over to this other target, I do not have any poisons on it. Poisons do not transfer over this. Second, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and rupture. If, as you can see, I now have rupture on this middle target. If I go back to the left target, there is no rupture on him. So rupture does not transfer over blade flurry. The implications of this are very simple. When we're using blade flurry, we want to keep up slice and dice, and then only five point eviscerate. We never care about rupture, because two eviscerates are greater than one rupture. Simple. There is one other quirk here that I want to talk about when you're using Blade Flurry. So let's say we're on a fight such as uh, Terrace of Endless Spring on the Protectors, and there are two Protectors on top of each other. As we know, we actually don't want to be running Blade Flurry on, on this, because only one Protector's HP ever matters. When the first one dies, the second two heal. When the second one dies, the third one heals to full. So if we're wasting uh, attacks of Blade Flurry on the second guy, not only do they not matter because they get healed up, but during that time we have reduced energy regeneration. So it's actually fake damage and we're just padding damage meters if we're doing that. However, during that time that we are attacking only one target, Killing Spree will come up. And as, you, as you've seen, I'll go ahead and use Killing Spree here, and Killing Spree will just bounce around targets with Reckless Abandon. So, what we can do to mitigate that fact is when we're using Killing Spree and we only care about one target, but there are other targets on top, we can still pop Blade Flurry, and then Killing Spree will be mirrored not only to the fake target, but also onto the main target. We'll lose a little bit of energy, but it's actually a lot better to ensure that all of our Killing Spree strikes hit that main target. So again, there's a few places where this uh, makes sense. Terrace of Endless Springs on the Protectors, when two Protectors are on top of each other, Phase 2 Amber Shaper, when you have the um, adds Monstrosity and Boss all together, although actually we want Blade Flurry up then anyways, uh, when we're hitting both the Monstrosity and the Player Controlled Construct. Um, and a few little different fights like that. Uh, it might also be useful on Empress, if you happen to keep one add alive, so that your melee always get the um, Poison Damage buff. Uh, in those cases, you don't care about the ad at all, you're keeping him alive, but when you Killing Spree, you want to ensure that all Killing Spree strikes hit the boss. So you put Blade Flurry up, you happen to bounce around the both of them, you hit the both of them, and then you immediately turn Blade Flurry back off. Simple. So what are the things that we did and didn't talk about? We talked about our rotations, 
different quirks of our abilities, and then really how to draw all of those together into you know a full solid rotation, including cooldowns, how to best use them, how to maximize um, getting procs of restless blades, all sorts of great awesome things. What we did not talk about is specialization, glyphs, and gearing strategy. I'm actually going to cover that for combat rogues in another video. Um, this one, I think, is getting a little long. If for any reason you believe that there is misinformation in this video, please go ahead and feel free to let me know. I will be happy to make note of it, or I will um, just change the video. I have no qualms with that. Nobody's perfect. I'm not saying I know everything. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, other than that, again, I do want to stress on top of that that I would like to do, you know, a general series of videos. And, you know, combat rogues don't really apply to everyone. I could do more for other classes, um, and I can try my best to do so. But on top of that, I'd like some more generic ideas. Um, so I will be posting a list of ideas after this if people feel particularly interested in any, or again, have any ideas of their own. Just feel free to let me know those, and we'll see what we can do. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll catch you later.